With the launch of 10th edition and the new narrative of the Tunids invading the Segmentum Pacificus, there is a lot of talk about what is going to happen, mainly from me in the narrative sense of the Warmer 40,000 storyline. Now, I've just finished the Leviathan novel by Darius Hinks. This is a novel that is linked with the launch of 10th edition. It's about the Ultramarines fighting a Leviathan as they invade this planet. But there's a passage of text, a little bit of text in this, that gives me hope that we actually may see Gilliman take on the Tyranids in the Segmentum Pacificus. So let's jump in and let's get waffling. Of course, spoiler warning, if you're still reading the Leviathan book, it's probably best to leave this video now because I am going to put the passage of text in the background and it is towards the end of the book. So I don't want to be the one that spoils it for you. So this is your first and only warning. So the bit of text I'm about to read in the background is from a character called Vultis. He's an apothecary biologist. Basically what he's doing in this book, he's found like this tyranny stuff. He's trying to take it apart. He's trying to literally turn the tyranids against each other by using the tyranids. He's literally doing his biology things. That's basically the summary of his character. Um, and he gets these visions and he sees one vision, which I'm about to put in the background right now, and I'm going to read. And it says, the sounds of battle grew even more distant. Gradually, the heat began to rise. He pictured Gilliman's command chamber and he felt the presence of the Harbringer closing in on its prey. Even here, way beneath the ground, the Tyranids were muddying his thoughts and confusing him. So basically, the Harbringer is um, one of the big monsters or one of the big Tyranid units that has literally been putting pressure uh, and tricking the Ultramarines and making the civilian population of this world go completely mad. And I think now, this is one of the first times it's actually mentioned the Tyranids knowing or learning of the hierarchy of the Imperium as a whole. The thing what we have now, uh, especially with, with some of the new Tyranid units that are going to be coming on the tabletop, the non emissary the Assimilator and stuff like that, we know that these are designed to take out the top head honchos, the generals, the people who sit at the top and give all the orders. Valoris himself, you know, struggled to take one of this one of these big non-emissaries down um, with a squad of custodians that was going for one of the Imperial Guard generals um, in the uh, 10th edition rulebook with, with the law that happened with there. So them knowing about Gilliman, for me, seems that they want to get to Gilliman to kill him, to execute him, to rid him from the galaxy. Because they know if they take away Gilliman, then the Imperium potentially could break apart, fall, and that's when the High Fleet Leviathan can slide in and really start consuming as much biomass as possible. Now, basically, what happens in this novel, right at the end of it, is that the Loyalist forces on the planet are overrun. The planet is lost to the Tunids, and they end up blowing up the planet with some kind of uh, generator that goes into the middle of the planet. Uh, terraforming and all that stuff is involved in this. I'm not going to go over like the, the, the full lore of it. Um, but the planet is blown up. But it's stated in the novel that this planet is very, very important because this planet is basically the planet that you have to go through to get to the soul system, to get to Terra itself, which makes sense and doesn't make sense um, at the same time because um, it's said that the planet is that important because, of course, you know, it's straight to Terra, straight to soul system, but it was defended, like, with about 50 Marines, 50 to, like, 80 Marines, like, one Imperial Guard Regiment. There was no Imperial Navy there, as far as I'm aware. So for a planet that's so important <laughs> that basically leads to terror, it's like, wait, this wasn't defended at all? This is what Abaddon should have been doing. He should have, like, gone round the back and got in this way. But put that aside, basically, the main story is, is that the Tyranids are now a huge threat. The door is kind of open to get into the soul system, to get into Terra. There is some um, Imperium forces that survived the planet breaking apart and blowing up, and they've gone to warn other planets of the incoming doom of the Tyranids. But this leads into the next big question for me now, the next big stepping stone. And again, I'm sorry if I'm uh, going over old ground, but where the hell are the Loyalist Primarchs. I say Primarchs because there's two of them back now. We have Lionel Johnson and we have Ribuy Gilliman. Lion, you can't really blame it on, uh, on him at this moment in time because he's forest walking, doing all the stuff with Chaos. But Gilliman surely now has to look at the Tunids as the big, big 
threat. Yes, I'm sure you can argue until you're blue in the face that Chaos are the long game. You know, they are the main, main threat. But right at this moment in time, at this junction, the Tunids are literally breaking through the segment of Pacificus on a di direct line to Terra. And if Terra falls, the Imperium falls, let's face it. So hopefully what this will bring now is Gilliman stepping up and we will start to see some books some narrative uh, um, aspects start happening with Gilliman going over to the segment of Pacificus and actually start fighting um, these Tyranid foes as I've mentioned b before like Valoris is out there leading uh, the Soul Blades the Imperial Fist the Phalanx are there the Ultramarines is there there's plenty of other chapters there. I only did a video the other day that it's looking like one of them, the next potential narratives could be the Raven Guard, the Raptors, the Sons of Korax, basically, um, jumping up and getting their own, um, uh, you know, scraps and scrapes in, and they, they have their own narrative book and stuff like that, which hopefully that does turn out to be true. I know I mentioned Korax as a bit of a joke, and a lot of people took that serious. That was literally a joke, you know? I'm allowed to have a laugh, right? Of course I want Korax back, but I don't think he's going to come back. I do think there's going to be another Loyalist Primark coming back this edition, but that is another story for another time, and it's definitely not going to be Korax. Um, anyway, I'm going to call the video there, leave it there. I just thought I'd leave this with you. Hopefully, this is signs that potentially Gilliman and the Tyranids are going to start meeting in the open field, and we can start to see Gilliman taking on the Tyranid threat. I want to see Gilliman behead a Swarm Lord. I want to see Gilliman behead the non-emissary, the assimilator, stab the Emperor's sword through its throat and just rip it apart with his bare hands. This is the stuff I want to see. Right, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and bye-bye.